Michael Samin and he is Uria Harvey. Um, we've run a game studio called Tale of Tales for about 12 or 12 years, up until like three years ago. And um, um, this is the reason why Indicate has asked us. Do they think we still have something to say that is pertinent to people who make games, I think. I hope. We, we will probably want to change their mind about making games. <laughs> I think that we've always sort of stood for the fact that um, a game can be anything, really. And um, the fact that interactivity is really the key to everything. Um, and looking at the interactive medium as being something that is uh, a way for an audience to um, to make your work come alive. So really the only definition we have of game is that uh, it's something where it's the artwork needs the audience in order to exist. Uh, it's very different. We've, made, we've published uh, eight games, so each one is sort of different and that's kind of the point in the sense that we take a certain subject, be it a story or a feeling or something, and then design everything around that. So our way of working is always to make things first and then design them, mm -hmm. not, not the other way around, because it's only when it's running on a computer that you really know how things feel and, and what things do. Mm -hmm. So then, and, and yeah, always be very open to do yeah. things that can change at any moment. Um, in order to get to that expression of, of that feeling or that story, yeah. but even be open to that. And if the game tells you that I don't want to tell the story, then you have to listen to the game and just do something else. <laughs> and the opposite as well. Like if the story is telling you to do something different with the game, right. there's no genres with us. There's no like sort of um, adherence to any sort of preconceived notion of what the game is going to be. Um, you have to listen to the, th the thing that you believe should exist in that idea and sort of be true to that core experience. <laughs> it's complicated. I think in, in some ways we, we wanted to stop making commercial video games and that's pretty much what we stopped. It's always been kind of a debate, up for debate for us, what we actually stopped doing considering we're still working. <laughs> um, but. Um, um, the idea was to stop making commercial video games, meaning um, erasing that part of the, the, what video games are from our mind again, because in the beginning that's what we did as well. We made things and we just released them for free and people just downloaded them and whoever was interested played and whoever wasn't didn't, I assume. Um, but as soon as you start charging money for things, it, it sort of changes uh, what you make. Uh, and we felt it was changing what we made for the worse and changing us for as creators for the worse also. And we wanted to get back in touch with um, kind of why we wanted to make things with computers in the first place, I think, and um, who we want to make them for. And um, I think that's why we decided. But, you know, we still make uh, all the same stuff. We're still called Tale of Tales. It's like kind of a funny thing, but, you know, that's how we, how we roll, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but we're very happy that the Endless Forest still lives. I think the Endless Forest, well, especially since we've decided to remake it, um, the Endless Forest will indeed be endless for us. And, um, um, but we, we really love that because it was the first project that we put out um, in 2005. And people, to have people still be playing it and th have it be important for them is... Um, is like super for us, like, and we we love those guys who play the games, like the, whoever they are, those deer. We think they're fabulous. I mean, you know, um, because it's um, it attracts interesting people. <laughs> I guess the game. Um, as for the other games, I mean, we w of course wish they would last forever, but um, if we don't continue to recompile them for new OSs and various vagaries of technology, they'll, they'll fade away, unfortunately. But it's always kind of been a, a good point for us that um, the games live on in people's minds, and we always felt like that was, since we believe that the players make the games complete anyway, that that is where the game lives mostly even when they're playing it, you know. So we're happy that it, uh, people will have nice memories of the things that we spent years making. There is a continuity in the sense that we want to explore computers as an artistic medium, um, but it's a discontinuity in the sense that we don't want them to be games. And this has actually been sort of a struggle. And I think the first thing that we sort of now 
released this Krikot 3, uh, a first version of it. And we'll talk about that in the keynote as well, about sort of how some things are not right yet. And it's kind of hard to stop making games, <laughs> um, but we try to um, because we have sort of lofty goals and aspirations as artists. Uh, we, we, we have we have more ambitions than, than what fits within a sort of a games format for us. Mm -hmm. um, and Cathedral in the Cloud is sort of like the, the, the super version of that where, I mean, this that's an, a, a, a a project inspired by buildings like these, you know, and art, uh, Renaissance art, and, and uh, very, you know, things that we really, really admire a lot. So we're sitting, standing there as little dwarfs looking up <laughs> to these amazing artworks and trying to do something somehow in that vein, somehow that, that fits that kind of aesthetic thinking. Mm -hmm. And we're taking our time with that because we're a bit uh, intimidated. <laughs> we need time to, to get there, but yeah. So in, in practice, these, these, we're working with virtual reality at the moment because that sort of gets closest to us to, in a, to a way for us to get very near to what, what happens on the computer because that's very interested in that sort of life form that Aria talked about that happens on the computer. And VR allows us to sort of look into that more closely but there's, you know, there's no guarantee that, that we'll be doing that in five years or something. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> the format almost doesn't matter with Cathedral in the Clouds. Mm -hmm. it's, um, and in fact, it's important that it's in many different sort of materializations, like you know, physical space, installation, performance, uh, objects, music. Like it's, um, for us, this is a very, um, it's sort of an umbrella project for everything that we're interested in, <laughs> in a funny way. Uh, and that's really freeing for us. Not theater in and of itself, it's, it's inspired by a very concrete theater made by Tadeusz Kantor in uh, Poland. Um, he's dead now, um, died in 1990. But his work was very influential, sort of on postmodern actual theater. Um, but the thing that was interesting to us uh, was that he used a lot of props and actors sort of on a similar, uh, on the same level, mm -hmm. um, which is very similar to, uh, to what we do in, in real-time 3D. Act, you know, characters and, and tables are actually made of the same material. And then there's the uh, added element in the Cantor's theater is that the director was always on stage, sort of directing the environment. So we thought this is sort of very similar to what we try to do, especially when we do it in VR. So Cricotrie ends up being, you sort of play the director and you take the stage props and you put them mm -hmm. on a stage. That's basically all it is. That's, that's, the, that's the experience. Of course, the props are kind of like weird and a bit scary sometimes. And they have a little bit of life yeah. of their own and things happen and so you, your reaction to them is also part of the piece. No <laughs> next mutation. We never plan on there being a next mutation, although this is like the fourth or something. Yeah. <laughs> but we d we just do these names so that we they're more markers for ourselves to to mark a a change of uh, mode. We don't let go of. We we have ideas all the time, but it's just you know there's certain ones that stick around and keep coming back, and so eventually we work on it, and sometimes it takes over and becomes the larger project, but. Um, it's almost like we don't choose them, they choose us. <laughs>